الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعين به ونتوكل عليه والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وخاتم الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين نبينا محمد المصطفى وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين Respected brothers and sisters viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته one of the beautiful and inspirational stories of the Qur'an, and no doubt men, the Qur'anic narratives are all inspirational, is the one related to the household of purity, nobility, the household of generosity and magnanimity, the Ahl al-Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them, when they dedicated and donated their food for three consecutive days as the Quran explains to us in Surah Al-Insan وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala across a number of verses highlights how these group of pure individuals thought about others before themselves took care of the needs of others before looking at their own requirements and their own needs. Indeed, we are told that the Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as-salam, Sayyidatun Nisa Fatimatul Zahra, peace and blessings be upon her, her husband, the commander of the faithful, Mawla al-Muttaqeen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam their sons Imam al-Hasan and Hussein, peace and blessings be upon them. And we are told their servant Fidda, Lady Fidda, Radhwanullah Ta'ala alayha, had made this vow that they will fast for three days if the Imams Hassan and Hussein are cured from their illness. And the first day that they observed this fast, a knock on the door is heard, whereby a poor individual requests some assistance. One after the other, they all give that individual their entire portion of loaf or the bread that they had that they would use to break their fast that day. They did not half it, they did not quarter it, they all dedicated it and donated it to this particular individual. They broke their fast with water and slept hungry. The next day, a orphan comes and requests the same thing. Once again, this household that is known for its generosity did exactly the same as the first day, gave its food to this particular orphan, Yatim. And on the third day, a captive who perhaps was not necessarily a Muslim, requested assistance, requested food. And Amir al-Mu'mineen, Sayyidat al-Nisa Fatima, Al-Hasan al Hussein, as well as Lady Fidda, would give their bread and whatever they had to break their fast with. And indeed, when the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad al-Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, saw them thereafter, he saw that they were pale. For three days they had not eaten anything. They had broken their fast with water only. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, across a number of ayat, exhibits the praise upon these holy individuals and their eternal sacrifice as well as their achievement of altruism and kindness. One of the important areas to focus and to seek lessons and to implement in our lives as far as this story is concerned is what the Quran puts forth the reason for the actions of the Ahl al-Bayt. The Ahl al-Bayt 
explain why they did what they did. Allah Taala says, "Innama nutaimukum liwajhillah, la nuridu minkum jazaan wa la shukura." We are giving you this food. We are feeding you for the sake of Allah. We do not need any recompense or gratitude from you. From whom? From these three individuals. Similarly, the verse before says, وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا They provide and give food for the sake of Allah, due to the love of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not, as some unfortunately have said, for the love of the food, despite the desire for food. عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ in the Quran refers to the magnitude of the love and the compassion that the Ahlul Bayt had towards the absolute perfect being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because the verse is clearly says, When you put the next verse right next to this one, you come to the conclusion that it was the purity of thought, it was the sincerity, it was the devotion, it was the ikhlas that was manifested by these holy individuals in this action of theirs. And therefore, it emerges for humankind to learn the virtue and the necessity of demonstrating purity of thought and purity of action. In other words, the requirement for our deeds to be presented sincerely for it to be accepted, sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This story of the Ahlul Bayt is one of many that highlights how these glorious individuals throughout their lives, throughout their teachings, sermons and statements have highlighted the importance of sincerity, the importance of having purity of intention and purity of action. And indeed, the religion of Islam emphasizes this greatly. The Holy Quran has numerous references to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surely, verily, to Allah belongs the religion which is pure. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul inni umirtu an a'budu Allah mukhlisan lahu deen. Say, in chapter 39, verse number 11, I have been commanded to worship Allah sincerely when it comes to my faith, when it comes to my practice. This sincerity of action and thought is many a times presented as a feature which is unique for the religion of Islam. That it is the barometer by which the actions are measured and indeed accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet of Islam, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, in a famous narration says, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ وَلِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى How will the deeds of you and I be measured? Well, it is primarily through the intentions, isn't it? Therefore, ikhlas is defined as the pure, unadulterated, clean, unshared intention for the sake of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And indeed, when you and I throughout our lives purchase certain products, do certain deeds and actions for other human beings, want to accomplish certain tasks, we are expected that these products are presented in its original form, not tampered with, not adulterated, not changed where the products are mixed up. If we want a certain brand, we expect to buy that brand. If we are told it's a mixture of several brands, most people are not keen and are not interested to acquire that particular object. We require and often ask for 100% purity or 100% originality when it comes to certain elements, certain aspects that we want to purchase or obtain, services included. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says as far as our deeds are concerned, they must be presented in that way for His sake and His sake alone. And there must be no inclusion of the intention of others 
when it comes to our deeds. He, in a narration, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam tells the famous righteous companion Abu Dharr al-Ghafari radhwanullahi ta'ala alayhi Ya Abu Dharr liyakun laka fi kulli shay'in niyyatun salihah Oh Abu Dharr, make sure that your intention is righteous for everything you do even hatta fi nawmi wal akl even when it comes to your food when it comes to your sleep what is the message? The message of the Ahl al-Bayt is ensure that every deed that you and I perform should be for the sake of Allah. Whether we eat, we drink, we sleep, we go out to work, we go out to study, whatever task we are about to perform, it should be entirely for the sake of God and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that purity that intention, that hard work to make it second nature and to constantly inculcate ourselves with that mission and that objective produces amazing and brilliant results. It produces fantastic outcomes. Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad ibn al-Sadiq sallallahu wa sallamu alayhi highlights this to us. He famously says, إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ نَظَرَ رُضْوَانْ خَازِنُ الْجَنَّةِ on the day of judgment, Radwan, who is the angel in charge of paradise, looks at people. نظر إلى قوم لم يمروا به. He looks at certain individuals who have entered paradise, but he did not know about them. They did not necessarily go through him, or he wasn't aware how they entered paradise. So he asks. So you know, surprised. How did these people enter Jannah? Min ain dakhaltum. How did you enter? Man antum. Who are you people? Fayakulun. They reply, Iyaka anna. Don't worry about us. Fa inna qawman abadna Allah sirran fa adkhalana Allahu sirra. We are people that worshipped Allah in private and He entered us in Jannah in secret and in private. Subhanallah. How beautiful is this? Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq sallallahu wa sallamu alayhi says, even that element is looked after by the Almighty Jalla wa Ala. And of course, the Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as salam would emphasize this in numerous occasions. Notice how Imam Ali ibn al-Husayn al-Sajjad Zayn al-Abideen the fourth holy Imam, peace and blessings be upon him, would carry the food and deliver it to the poor and the needy at night. He would place it next to those individuals without them knowing who this person is, without necessarily identifying himself, without telling them whom the person giving them food in reality is. Upon the burial of Amir al muminin peace and blessings be upon him, we are told that Imam al Hassan and Hussein alayhum salam they passed by after the burial of Imam Amir al muminin and they saw a man crying. When they asked him, Why are you crying? he said that, you know, there is a man who kept coming to me and providing me with food. He would speak to me, but I never knew who this person was. I never asked him his name, and then the last three days he has not come to me. I have not seen him, I miss his presence. They said, Hada Abuna Ali ibn Abi Talib. This is our father, Amir al muminin This man was so shocked. He was weeping and he requested that they are, he is taken to the grave of Amir al muminin And so we find such beautiful practice, this akhlaq of sincerity by the Ahl al-Bayt of nobility, Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'in. Why is this important for us to remind ourselves on a continuous basis? Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam says, if, according to a narration, if an individual has a pure niyyah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala verifies that their intention is indeed pristine for his sake, then they are given the reward of the act that they would have done if they had the resources. For, ex for instance, I may have the intention to build a school or to build a hospital or to, for example, 
hold the majlis of Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. But maybe I'm not in a situation or a position to do so. I may be in a place where that is not possible. I may not have the financial capabilities. Imam alayhi salam says, because your intention is pure, and Allah knows if you had the money, you would have, for example, have held the majlis, or you would have contributed towards the orphanage, you get the reward for actually doing that deed, subhanAllah. How generous is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many ample opportunities exist for reward and thawab from the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala? And yet, of course, at the same time as we find that there is so much reward given to us by the Almighty, exemplified and demonstrated by the Ahlul Bayt, for purity of thought and sincerity, there are also devastating consequences for ostentation, for riya, which is known as ashirk al azgar, for showing off, for doing things for the sake of others, for doing things to seek the approval of others, for including others within our intentions. And indeed, we are told that if that unfortunately happens, and it could easily happen according to the narration of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, it is so easy for the human being to start doing things not for the sake of Allah, and it will slip into their minds and in their heart as easily as it will be difficult to see an ant on a rock in a dark night. It's not possible to see that and pick that up. Likewise, sometimes it's not possible for us to feel our push towards ostentation, showing off or um, seeking the pleasure of others at the expense of the pleasure of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are told according to the Holy Prophet, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, that this individual who shows off, who seeks the pleasure of others at the expense of the pleasure of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, will be called upon on the Day of Judgment. إِنَّ الْمُرَائِي يُنَادَى يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَا فَاجِرْ يَا غَادِرْ يَا مُرَائِي O wretched, O disloyal one, O one who shows off continuously, ظل عملك وبطل أجرك Your deeds have been deviated. Your actions have been annihilated. اذهب فخذ أجرك ممن كنت تعمل له Go and take your reward from the one whom you sought to please. Go on. Allah says on the Day of Judgment, who can help you other than the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who can intercede from the permission of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, if the human being somehow was under this false illusion that those people and their approval is of the greatest importance, they will recognize how the shaitan made it so disillusioned for them and they will feel a great sense and a state of remorse. And thereafter, of course, for an individual who was seeking that, sadly, the Prophet of Islam would say that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, place their action in Jahannam as he did not seek my pleasure in it. Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam says, if you want to know the signs of somebody who is constantly showing off, al-murai, or is not mukhlas, is not demonstrating sincerity in their thought, there are four signs according to the narration. The first is they feel lethargic or lazy when they're by themselves, meaning that only in the presence of others they feel the need to do, for example, certain good deeds or to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because others are watching them.
But when they're by themselves, they don't feel the need to, for example, put the effort or struggle. And that is why the Ahl al-Bayt have emphasized Salatul Layl, the night prayers. The Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in his famous statements to Amir al muminin would say to him, Ya Ali, alayka bi Salatul Layl. Alayka bi Salatul Layl. Alayka bi Salatul Layl. Oh Ali, make sure you perform Salatul Layl. Of course, the message was primarily for us, Amir al muminin and the Ahl al-Bayt, would find sweetness in the conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to the night prayers. Here we have Sayyida Zainab, peace and blessings be upon her, on that very difficult, painful night, the eve of the 11th of Muharram, performing Salatul Layl while sitting down. So the first quality is therefore, or the first characteristic rather, of a person who is showing off is their laziness in isolation. The second is when they are with people, they somehow feel the need to do more and to seek that particular attention and pat on the back from the individuals themselves. And that's where it's compared to the first point. In other words, it is not that they're always busy or working hard when they're by themselves and likewise when they're out there with other human beings, no. It's when they're in isolation and they're very much not bothered. But when they are in public, they somehow feel the need to do it so that people don't necessarily criticize or people don't necessarily say bad things about them. And the third characteristic is that they increase the work once they are praised. In other words, they are not only hypocritical and they have a dichotomy uh, as far as their actions are concerned. So, you know, their salah is longer in public, for example. They find the need to uh, give more charity so that others would approve. No. What also happens is that when people praise them, they do more. And they only will do more if there is praise. And therefore, the fourth qual uh, the characteristic is that Amir al-Mu'mineen says, according to the narration, is that if they don't get praise, they give up. And they're just looking for that particular good encouragement, so to speak, from people, because that is why they're doing it. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, we as the followers of the Ahl al-Bayt, whom see them as the ship of salvation, that it's an honor for us to be able to be called the Shia of the Ahl al-Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them. In order for us to be individuals who truly are labeled as their followers, as their lovers, as their true Shia, we must be able to understand the sensitive and the delicate nature of the spirit and the soul of their deeds and actions, and that is ikhlas and sincerity. If we have doubt in our minds whatsoever, why am I doing something? It is better not to do it. Why? Because the moment I do it for the sake of others, then it will perhaps switch and change from a deed which I will be rewarded by Allah for to one that I may be punished for, because it may become one that is a result of showing off. People ask, but how do I attain? How do I seek to continuously become sincere and be of the mukhlaseen? We must increase our knowledge and understanding of the faith, tawheed and monotheism, and learn about the life of the Holy Prophet and the Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them them all. This is why the famous narration of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam مَنْ قَالَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ مُخْلِصًا فَلَهُ الْجَنَّةِ Whomsoever says لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ sincerely then paradise is for them. But then the Prophet of Islam continues and says but this لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ should be one that stops them from the committing of evil deeds and sins and transgressions against the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Number two, if we are unsure of the niyyah and we are hesitant about whom we are doing it, then we must do it in private, if it is done in public, yes. Number three, we should be careful when we feel the need to speak to people about, about our actions. Yes, sometimes it requires us to do that. Amir al-Mu'mineen gave four uh, types of charity. At night, during the day, in private and in public. Yes, sometimes we need to do th some things in public, but of course Allah knows the intention that why we're doing it. So scrutinize and investigate our intentions very, very carefully. Don't let us just do it without any reflection or introspection of why we do certain tasks. And of course, the Quran tells us beautifully, Inna akhlasnahum dar. That certain individuals attain ikhlas and sincerity by the remembrance of the day of judgment, the day of reckoning, the day of measure accountability, the day of remorse, and the day of grief. The more we can somehow picture, the more we can keep that image in our minds, the more we can understand how our deeds will be held account, how we will be held accountable and how our deeds will be measured, the more we are driven to ensure that it is done for the sake of Allah and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And of course, above all, we have to ask Allah wa ta'ala for this. We have to beseech Him. We have to continuously seek the intercession of the Ahl al-Bayt to ensure that we do not deviate. And if God forbid we do deviate, we seek tawbah and forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for any act that we may have committed for the sake of others. And if some people praise us, then there is not a problem, but we must not necessarily actively be looking for that praise given also this day and age the rise of social media and, for example, the craving for attention that people have. We must be very careful if we do something and promote it out there, not necessarily looking for that pat in the back, but rather doing it for the sake of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us tawfiq that we practice sincerity and ikhlas in the footsteps of the glorious ship of salvation. محمد وآل محمد صلوات الله وسلامه عليهم أجمعين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد المصطفى وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين